Welcome to another edition of LR Main Reviews, and tonight I'm here to review the August 7th, 2017 edition of Monday Night Raw, which takes place in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So some things to look forward on the show. Uh, Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman are having a last man standing match. You know, those two usually have great matches, so it should be a really good match. And uh, another big news is the Raw Women's Championship match is now off. Bailey is out of the match due to an injury because Nia Jax injured her. Nia is reckless in the ring. And from what I hear, there's going to be two triple threat uh, matches tonight. And then the winners of each triple threat matches will meet next week in, uh, to find out who faces uh, Alexa Bliss at uh, SummerSlam. So the show started off, and the Miz Taraj is in the ring for Miz TV. They want Jason Jordan uh, to come out, but Kurt Angle interrupts, and then he introduces their guest, which is going to be Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Brock is massive, uh, massively over here. He gets a huge pop. Fans are chanting Suplex City. They are going ape shit for Brock. So Brock is just a, comes off as a huge superstar. And in this whole segment, he's definitely a baby face. You had Miz. Uh, he started running down Lesnar and Heyman, saying Lesnar's going to lose the belt and stuff. Uh, Miz is just uh, I, mean, I don't take him seriously. I think he's just uh, he's the king of soft style. You know, people call Nakamura the king of strong style. To me, the Miz would be the king of soft style. He's not a tough guy. He's a pussy, and he's not a believable champ. So, uh, Brock Lesnar beats the shit out of everyone here. Uh, that's how it breaks down. Uh, Heyman cuts a decent promo, and then uh, Lesnar just he suplexes each one of the Miz Taraj, gives and gives everyone a five. So that was actually a really cool segment and a uh, great. With Brock. So Seth Rollins is out. That means I pretty much want to turn off my TV right now when I see this guy. So, uh, you know, I don't mean to uh, be too hard on Seth. His character is boring me to death right now. Um, I don't find him interesting at all as a baby face. I'm not rooting for him. And once I found out he's wrestling Sheamus, man, it makes me want to change the channel. It's going to be hard to get through this. So uh, they had a match, and Sheamus ended up winning with the distraction roll up after a match. Seth does a suicide dive onto Cesaro. Then, you know, Sheamus and Cesaro end up getting the upper hand and beat down Seth and no Ambrose. Ambrose does not come out for the save. I really don't care about this anymore. I, just, I want the storyline to be over with. I don't care. They show Ambrose and Rollins arguing in the back. They keep teasing tension between the two. I, I don't really care. After that, Jason Jordan comes out, gets no reaction, no reaction whatsoever. He just sucks. I think he's turning heel. I really do. And his, uh, he was supposed to face Curtis Curtis Alex, so since Brock killed him, uh, he was like he was laying down backstage. Um, Kurt Angle then uh, sends just some random guy with a French name out to the ring to face Jason Jordan. So, whatever. So it's a squash match for Jason Jordan. Next, they go to show a video um, of Bailey. You know, they're talking about her injury. She has a separated shoulder. They show her, they show her uh, walking in the back. And she's going to address the crowd now. Um, I'm assuming Alexa's going to come out and interrupt her and stuff. So Bailey comes out, and it's just so cringeworthy. I felt bad for her. Charlie Caruso's in the ring um, interviewing her, and you just hear Bailey talking, and the fans are, I don't even think they were booing. You can hear some boos, but she acknowledges the boos, and they get louder. I'm not sure what happened. Um, it was a mixed reaction. I'm not, I don't even know what the hell she did there. Uh, that was just a complete, just, oh, man, I was a, I felt really bad for her. She was injured, and the fans are booing her. Oh, it's the. She, it's better if she is injured. Actually, not even though it might sound cruel, um, being away from the fans right now will give her character some time and get a, give us the fans a chance to miss her and maybe she'll be better and regain some momentum. And that was kind of classless for that crowd to just boost someone when they're hurt. But whatever, Sasha came out. She got a decent reaction to first a triple two triple threat matches. So it's Sasha, Alicia Fox, and Emma in a triple threat match. Match was okay. Again, crowd was bizarro land. It was kind of funny. Um, I think Emma was the most over here. Yeah, they kind of, uh, I mean, Alicia got in a reaction. They were kind of booing Sasha at times. So Emma was the most over woman. Then Alexa Bliss come on. She did commentary for the match. So they really teased Alexa and Sasha after Sasha made Emma tap out with the bang statement. They had a bit of a stare down and went on for a while, so I assume Nia's winning the second triple threat match and it's Sasha and Nia at Raw. Hopefully it's Alexa and Sasha at SummerSlam. That's what it really should have been the whole time. And I think it's better for Bailey because I think Bailey would have probably gotten booed in that match at SummerSlam, so uh, I think Alexa and Sasha's the match, but we want to see more anyway. And hopefully WWE does the right thing and gives us that match at uh, SummerSlam. 
Then they go to Braun Storm to backstage at Renee Young. And Renee asks, uh, Renee, when Renee first starts to talk, her, you can barely hear her. I think there were some problems with the mic. Then uh, Strowman cuts a promo on Reigns. And um, all I'm thinking about, get on your knees, Strowman. Anyway, uh, promo was okay. Strowman was getting cheered during it, so I'm sure I'll be cheered during the match tonight. I just thought of something. The other triple threat match, I think it's Nia Jax, Dana Brooke, and Mickey James. That means Nia Jax and Dana Brooke are going to be in the same ring. God help us all. So Enzo comes out. It's just, I don't even want to see this guy anymore. I know the, I know Vince McMahon despises him. I mean, just release him already. Um, no point in sending the kid back to NXT. Just release him and get rid of him. I know, even though he's over with the fans, he, a lot of people don't like him. And it's unfortunate, even though, I mean, it's not what the fucking company and the wrestlers want. It's what the fans want. Uh, Big Show and Enzo were talking. Uh, Gallows and Anderson came out. They ended up having a match. Big cast made the distraction. It was just fucking miserable. This whole storyline sucks. Big Cass comes out when he's trying to beat up Enzo. He stalks Enzo around the ring. Enzo's the biggest... Uh, I mean, can they just release him already? I don't want to see him anymore. I mean, the way they're going to treat him, I don't even want to see him anymore. And then uh, he stalks him around the ring. Uh, Enzo baits him into uh, to getting attacked by Big Show like a heel. So Enzo and Big Show to heels. And Big Show knocks out Big Cass. And Big Cass looks like a complete fool. Ugh, the storyline sucks. This Finn Balor Bray Wyatt segment's just terrible. Balor started talking, and then Bray does his video interruption, and then he does it two or three times, and Bray disappears. It was fucking horrible. Bray sucks. I just, oh my god, I want to change the channel whenever I see Bray Wyatt. He's a fucking bum. They've killed him. He is the eater of pins. So Dean Ambrose and Cesaro was up next. Well, don't care at all. The fans are chanting, let's go Ambrose, Ambrose sucks. That's funny. This commentary is fucking terrible. Fucking awful commentary by Booker T. Booker T is the worst commentator in the fucking company right now. Since Otunga's not there, Booker is fucking garbage. He sucks on commentary. Cole is just dreadful. And Graves has just been getting on my nerves for some reason as of late. I don't like him. He just seems like a company shill out all of a sudden. Maybe it's because that bring it to the table show. But man, they're the fucking commentary. is garbage. What a terrible spot. They had Cesaro put shame, uh, uh, put Ambrose in a sharpshooter and have Ambrose break it up on Ambrose with the uh, baby face. You fucking break up a sharpshooter in Canada. What the fuck kind of booking is that? So, uh, they do the sharpshooter spot again and, uh, this time Ambrose gets to the ropes. These two are actually having a really good match right now on Raw. It's very good. So Ambrose and Cesaro, well, they, they had a really good match. Ambrose got the win at the end with the roll-up. Um, Shame Cesaro starts to beat up Ambrose, and then Rollins makes the save. And then there's, there's this really weird moment with the crowd. After uh, Rollins makes the save, he kicks uh, both their asses. So Shame and Cesaro have to retreat. Ambrose is still laying down in the, re- in the ring. And when Ambrose gets up, you just hear the fans chanting, yes, yes, yes. It was just really awkward. And uh, there was just such a loud reaction to it. I guess the fans really missed the shield and Ambrose uh, put his fist up like what the shield does but Rollins walked out so I don't know man I don't know if someone's going to turn heel or they're going to be you know reunite as a team but I mean they're really teasing and the fans really missed the shield and I missed the shield too I was a huge shield fan even though I don't like Roman Reigns right now I was always a big fan of the shield so and I prefer all the three, three of them as a unit rather than their individual, individual careers I'm not a fan of any one of their uh, individual career runs at all so I definitely prefer the shield as a team rather than them as single stars they show a recap of Brock Lesnar killing them as Taraj they show uh, Tazawa backstage with uh, Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews it's just cringeworthy bad and Neville comes and he interrupts and that's the match at SummerSlam that's the pre-show match no one cares about that and Tazawa's in a match at the Cruiser Race and uh yeah I there's something about it I mean the Neville the, I mean the Tazawa and uh and Titus stuff, some of it's so bad it's kind of entertaining, but it's just it's it's just awful. I don't know. I mean it's not it gets so bad kinda of good, but it's it's not it's not what you want. So Tazawa won some cruiserweight match against Davari. Now I think we have to get to that woman's match and I'm just dreading 
They had Nia Jax win, who's just fucking horrible, at one week after she injures Bailey and gives her a separated shoulder. I'm really worried Nia might meet Sasha. It's in Boston. That's Sasha's hometown, and Sasha's a baby face who's going to be cheering in her hometown. You know what that means. Also, you have to remember, the original plan was Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax, unless it was... Uh, Bliss was out on commentary, and I think they teased Sasha and Alexa too hard, so I'm a bit worried it's going to be Alexa and I at SummerSlam, because that was the original plan, so I'm concerned that's, ugh, man, that that's going to suck if that actually happens. I, I don't really care anymore, so I just, I'm, I don't know, I mean, it's two weeks before SummerSlam, and I have, just have no interest in this damn product right now. Last man standing match is next. I just don't even want to see Roman Reigns on my TV anymore. I don't even care. I mean, match was probably going to be really good. Just I just don't want to see that fucking guy on my TV anymore. So before the main event starts, they have a Goldust promo. I don't even want to comment. And then they show Kurt Angle backstage. Big Cass comes. He asks for Enzo Amore in a shark uh, cage match. Um, or uh, against the Big Show in a shark cage match. And Kurt makes it. Um, he, so... It's Big Show, Big Cass, Enzo Mori's in a shark cage. They've done that shark cage gimmick so many times now. They've done it like three times already in the last year or so. I think it's a little bit overkill already. Um, now Strowman's out for the main event. So a match was really good. Uh, they had a lot of good spots in it. Um, he had Reigns giving uh, Strowman some Owen drop through a table. And probably the best part of the whole match, you had a Roman Reigns teasing a spirit on... Um, on Strowman through uh, the barricade, but Strowman grabs um, like a computer chair or a desk chair that the that the announcer sit on, and he just launches it. I mean, he launches it right at Reigns, and it looks sick. It just hit Reigns right in the face, which is awesome. Crowd loved it. It was it was a great spot. Um, you know, they battle up the ramp. Um, they used um, uh the Titan Tron or the screens. And the end of the match comes, looks like Reigns is winning, hits a whole bunch of Superman punches on Strowman. And he hits the giant spear from the ramp. It looks like it's over. Reigns has it. It's that eight. You know, Strowman's not moving. Then Samoa Joe comes. And you think, why is it the ref just keep counting? But Joe comes out through the crowd. He chokes Roman Reigns unconscious with the Conquina clutch. He Reigns is out cold. They do the count and uh Reigns gets counted out and right at nine, right at eight, Strowman sits up and Strowman wins last man standing. I got very concerned. I was thinking, oh shit. No, no, no. Shit. That might mean Roman's winning at SummerSlam. I hope not. I hope that's not what happens. But when I saw that, man, I was concerned. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But the match, the main event was still a very good uh last man standing match.